mentioned previously in uh, this video or another video, you've got to get a barrel rolled up. And what I did is it's 1.6 mil steel or 1.5 mil. Um, I've got it rolled to the diameter, the whole diameter of the, um, the barrel, which is 400 millimeters. Um, I only got a piece about you know, double this long. Um, this part will be for the hatch and the, the offcut uh, for other parts on the body that have to be around here. Um, so you've got one skin and you cut it, basically got, we've cut this out. Now this was the original skin there, which I've explained in the video already, that goes there. That was the original piece. We've got this piece here to sit in there like this. And we're going to screw and glue this piece to that to put it back in place. And this will be held in by, by either four screws or some Velcro dots or something. Something that's easy to get in and out that's pretty inconspicuous. But you need that hatch in the back because you need to be able to get into R2 at any given time to fix things. Also, um, it's easy when you're mounting things to actually have an opening to get your hands into. And what I've done as well is I've, after I've cut the hole, this, this piece was already there because, sorry, this piece is already there because that's the, the piece that uh, I joined the seam on, as you can see there. Um, I just added another piece to the outside of it to give it a bit of thickness and chamfered it to the curve. And this piece I put in as well and screwed to that as well. So now we've got a fixed point we can rest our thing to. Um, I could also cut through there if I wanted to to make that opening a bit bigger, but at the moment it seems to be the right size and seems to be easy enough to move in and get in and out of. Now after you've cut this barrel to the right size, you want to mark the top, mark the top on your piece. The reason this has so many holes in it is because I tried a different design with some wood and just cutting, you know, cutting curved bits of wood to make it work and it just wasn't strong enough, so I ended up going with uh, some of this. Now you remember my original barrel is two skins thick. This is the thickness of one, that's the th thickness of the other, so it should mount up, meet up quite nicely when I put that on top. This is here just for looks, of course. So we're going to screw this all the way along. I'm going to keep in mind to stay away from the burn marks that we've put in, which are the design of R2. Um, put your screws in places where you can fill and cover them and we don't have to worry about them. That's the plan, anyway. Alright, I've changed my mind slightly. What we're going to do is we're going to get a 1 8 drill bit, which is perfect for a rivet like that. And we're going to put a hole in the corner through that and the metal. We're going to do it in inconspicuous places away from the burn line so we can fill it here and here, here and here, like so, so in three or four places. And then we're going to countersink the plastic so this, the head of this rivet sits under the surface of the plastic so we can fill over the top. And then we're going to squirt glue all through the middle and roll it down and rivet it as we go until so it's completely stuck on there. And then we're going to fill all these holes, which you don't have to do because these holes won't, won't be in yours, but we're going to fill all the new holes that we make as well and uh, get ready for painting. Now what I've done is I've circled where I've got to drill. So I'm going to do down the seam, I'm going to do four, five, five down this side, one in the middle, across the middle here as well. And what you want to do is you want to countersink it this. Now what you do is you get, don't worry about a countersink bit because they have the wrong, wrong pitch, get a drill bit that is just bigger than the ridge of that rivet, just a little bit bigger. That way it'll drill down to the right depth. And then very slowly over a block of wood, and I've got a block of wood with a hole in it so I just rested the thing over the hole like that and slowly drilled, just like zip, 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 zip with the uh, cordless drill down so that you can check and make sure that the head that rivet is disappearing into the plastic. When you do that, do all of those first before you do any gluing or screwing to get us uh, riveting together, and then we can drill those first run. So then, sorry, then we can drill the first five along the seam. Actually, we'll drill one first and rivet it so it's held in place. Line up the other end, drill that, and then we'll drill those other three across here. That way, it'll be held on in place on the on the middle, and we can squirt glue in the middle and do the rest. Okay, well done. If you make a mistake and drill right through, don't feel bad about it. Um, if, you made, if you drilled a big hole by accident, just drill another hole next to it and start again. You're just going to have to fill it up. I didn't make any mistakes this time. I made all the mistakes for the other ones. I didn't make any mistakes this time, so we're all good. All the rivets, you've checked check with the head of the river to make sure it sits below the surface. Um, and then you're ready to go. So we're going to rivet this corner in first, and then this corner to see where we go from there. There you have it.
along this edge. Nothing in the middle yet. So we're going to squirt glue in there now. I'm going to get not too much because you don't want to make this bubble, but you're going to put glue in there to make sure that it helps hold it in place. And then we're going to run, before you start rolling it around, make sure you get all the ones along this edge. Then we're just going to basically move to the middle to start on this side and then press down and do this side and then go through the middle and then the end, same thing, end, end, press down to the middle. Actually on the end I would start in the middle, so you can spread it out if you need to. Okay, problems you'll face, first of all, is you might get a rivet that doesn't sit quite flat. And if that's the case, you're going to have to grind the head of that off. But use a Dremel, just gently grind it off till it's below the surface. I've got one here, I've got one over here as well, somewhere. The other problem you're going to face is you've got the ends of the rivets sticking through. And that's okay, because that basically how a rivet works, it goes through, it gets pulled back and it spreads and fills a hole and that's how it holds it in place. The problem with that is it's going to be failing on the wood here. Now you probably say, why don't you put the holes back further? Because of this effect. See how it's bulging? Because when the plastic's under tension, it's going to want to flex out. I'm going to have to work out some other way of holding that in place. Maybe a bit more glue, squirt some glue in here and clamp it overnight or something. Um, but in the meantime, what I recommend is rather than grinding these off, which you can do, but then the rivet becomes loose and will fall out, is just put this in place, mark, put this in place down here, mark the actual orientation of where the rivet is and just get it and just mark it on the wood in here and get a drill bit and just, uh, just drill into the wood with a drill bit that's bigger than the back of the rivet. So an 8mm drill, drill bit, say, drill it into the wood, down about 10mm, and that way they won't fail on the timber. Just like that, I've just drilled in a little bit with a drill. Fits pretty good. It sticks up a little bit, it's not too bad. It's good around here. It only sticks up where those lumps are on the corner. So I've got a little bit of trimming to do. I've got to trim the edge of the metal off along here a little bit, about two millimetres. I'll do that with the um, six inch or four inch grinder. That'll give me a little bit of movement. So make it fit a lot nicer. But overall, that's pretty good. So what I decided to do is put silicon in the ends and clamp it to dry. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill in all these old other holes. This is what it looks like when it's finished. So I've filled all the holes and sanded them back. Filled all the rivet holes and sanded them back. This one here is a little bit high, so I'll have to grind that back and fill it again. Uh, just to get an idea of. It's all glued on the side, but the, the rivet's coming through the back on the metal piece. And it fits straight on the back of R2 beautifully. It just needs to be primed and painted once I finish filling those other couple of spots. There's a spot here as well, these two spots I've got to redo.